Hello, I am Luxbrush. And this is Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 4, Episode 16, It Ain't Easy Being Breezy. Wow, that's a nice callback right at the beginning of the episode to the Sonic Rainboom episode. Funny enough, this is actually the same episode in the season. Sonic Rainboom was episode 16 of season 1, and this is episode 16 of season 4. Nice coincidence and callback there. Very nice, especially since I totally didn't notice. <laughs> you didn't notice about the whole cheering section, which is a callback to the beginning of episode 16, Sonic Rainboom of season 1? No, didn't specifically click with an episode, just the tie back to Fluttershy's yay, but... That yay has been so socialized now in the community that it doesn't have a specific tie back for me anymore. It's one of those running jokes. And did you notice the mariachi band playing in the town square? Yes, I did. Uh, it was a very festival-like atmosphere, considering, oh, we must be careful and help the breezies. We mustn't be too loud or do anything to startle them. It's kind of like a bunch of people coming out to watch the whale migration or a whale migration. A lot of similarities. The whales are large enough to kind of go, ah, oh, people, whatever. <laughs> yeah, look at these small things. Oops, I'm sorry. Where with the breezes, it's rather opposite. Look at these little itty bitty tiny things. Oh, I stepped on one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also like the animation effect they use on Rarity's dress, though it kind of gave me like, well, what is this, Rarity being Liberace? What? <laughs> Yeah, very, very sparkly, and then for the dress to be even more sparkly, but at least for both of those items, I'm assuming on the dress, I've, I could have actually seen the dress under the sparkles. They're probably both very much Rarity's design. Just a little too many bright sequences. Ah! My eyes! Cannot look into the brightness! Oh, you saying I'm that beautiful? No, the dress! Also, the design of the breezies makes a lot of sense with the fact that they travel by using breezes. Their wings are large enough that they mostly can rely on gliding. Oh, my first thought looking at the breezies was, Oh my goodness, look at this brand new toy line. They're all a little bit different. We can make 50 million of them. And then they'll have to buy them all. Oh, uh, yeah. And the moment I saw Hundrum, I mean Spike, I knew he was going to cause problems. Mm-hmm. But the whole leaf thing just made me think of uh, Bug's life. <laughs> I am lost! Walk around the leaf. And this is another episode with a good background pinky. Yes, I loved how she was sideways on the tree, stomping her hooves because she was so excited. Yeah, and the fact that I'm going to explode. Mustn't explode from the cuteness. <laughs> also, going back to leaf, why didn't any of the unicorns in the audience stop the leaf? They clearly saw it was going to interfere with the breezies. Why didn't they grab it? That would be logical. Like, once all of the breezies were clinging to Fluttershy, why didn't she just fly ahead and catch up with the other breezies? I did not think of that. That makes sense as well. Oh well. Moving on. Plot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the breezies, the way they talked, kind of reminded me of the Swedish chef from the Muppets. Very much so. Though, considering that they had Seabreeze speaking whatever language it is that ponies speak in Equestria. They kind of needed to have something that actually sounded like words. Because I thought originally it would be more of like a chittering or an instrumental noise. You know, bell chimes, whistles, that sort of thing. I also love how we keep seeing more growth from Fluttershy. Especially in this episode, it shows her more willing to do things outside of her comfort zone, or would be more outside of her comfort zone. So this is slightly inside of her comfort zone because it involves, quote-unquote, animals or creatures. But it feels like she's more outgoing than she has been. Well, she kind of organized this whole thing. And since she was the one who went and watched the Breezy gathering, she probably has the most knowledge about the Breezies. And because of her kindness, she needs to use that knowledge to step up and make sure the Breezies make it safely through Ponyville. And moving on to Fluttershy's call it, college. Moving on to Fluttershy's cottage. How the heck did she knit that sweater? <laughs> I mean, she said it was hoof knit. How 
the heck did she hoof knit that? I can understand a pony sized dress, but what the? I also want to know how she did more than one in under an hour because she said who else needs one, which implies someone already had one. And when they show up at the door to check on the breezy, she's like, oh my, has it been an hour already? I'm lucky if I can make a scarf in an hour. <laughs> And wasn't the fake cussing scene great? Um, you don't want me to repeat that. <laughs> like, I'd rather not translate. I love how we can see more than just impatience as the motivation behind Seabreeze. And I'll get to the reasons later. Uh, well, considering that they're on a definite deadline to, you know, they either have to make the journey or never get home. It's like, why are the other Breezies so reluctant? Okay, it's a scary journey. I get that but don't you want to go home? Yeah, that bit of motivation I'm still kind of fuzzy on. Maybe it's because it's just they're so tired of doing this journey however often they do it. And who knows how long the journey has actually been over Equestria? Yeah, we really don't know. And, you know, Fluttershy's cottage is very nice, especially when you're a critter. And I could definitely see the motivation of wanting to stay with Fluttershy. I can understand that motivation of wanting to stay longer and not face a harsh journey, but the potential loss that's implied. How come Fluttershy believed that pretty obvious lie <laughs> about them having colds? I think it's just more of her being her overly kind self and going, well, they just want to stay a little bit longer. I think so, because this focus was, you know, too much kindness can be a bad thing. Yeah, it's kind of hard that if you believe it at all since not moments later they're showing partying. <laughs> uh, but I think part of it is Fluttershy doesn't want to let them go. She's enjoying having their company. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good reason. I also like how when Rainbow Dash shows up and asks, and Fluttershy goes, uh, yeah, uh, no, just a little bit longer. As she flies away and as she reassures the other two Pegasus, she kind of has this look of, I'm kind of doubting Fluttershy here. Definitely, because this is not normal Fluttershy, because everyone in the situation is aware of the time deadline. And then Seabreeze's temper tantrum. I mean, Seabreeze seems to be the only one who's really, truly concerned about the deadline, and I can totally see his frustration. None of the Breezies want to leave. Fluttershy isn't doing anything to get them out the door. And it's a big door, therefore hard to open. I love the fact that he somehow opened the peephole and got out that way. And Fluttershy goes, uh oh. And then goes after him. And as he's trying to get back to his home, we get this nice reference to Doctor Who in the background with Doctor Who's wearing the classic 3D specs. <laughs> and what's up with Fluttershy's bee costume in that scene? I'm like, what the heck is this a reference to? The only thing that came to mind was from Rescue Rangers, actually. Because there was an episode where a woman took over a queen bee's hive, you know, dressed like a bee and all that. Hmm. I vaguely remember that episode. God, it's been forever since i seen the Rescue Rangers. And once again, this episode really shows how much Fluttershy has grown. Because she didn't even use the stare on those bees. She just went all dragon shy on them. Or Iron Will. <laughs> yeah, she tried persuasion, and then she went to, okay, that's enough, move it. I don't know if she could have used the stare on that many individuals at once. Well, she did use it on all the bats. We know how well that worked. Well, that only worked badly because of Twilight's magic, which comes into play later in this episode. <laughs> yeah, fun. And I actually found the animation that they use for the Breezy's face on the way back as she's trying to cling on for dear life to Fluttershy, flying at normal Fluttershy speed, which now that I think about is even funnier than it was at the time. Yes, because Fluttershy is not the strongest flyer, so her fast speed... I don't know, I might be able to beat her walking. <laughs> <laughs> and that crying she did after the speech she gave to encourage all the Breezy's to go on their way... That's like the third time she's actually cried this season. I think that's a record. <laughs> <laughs> and why didn't she follow the Breezies out the door? You know, to start them on their journey? 
Uh, is that my cue to go into plot problems? <laughs> Only if you want to. <laughs> okay. Let's see. So, the Breezies gathered, Fluttershy's own words, in Western Equestria. The Breezies gathered in Western Equestria. Why did they need to gather? The Breezies all share the same homeland. So, if they needed to gather, wouldn't they have gathered on the Breezy side? And then entered Equestria together? Or is that the gathering that Fluttershy saw when they came through the portal originally? If they need the Breeze to get home and activate their magic, how did they make it as far as Ponyville to begin with? Because it's been established that they gathered in Western Equestria, which was far enough away that Fluttershy had to take a train to go see them. Yeah, so there must have been other Pegasus that helped them along the way, and probably not in the nicest fashion, so that may give even more credence to the fact that these Breezies wanted to stay with Fluttershy a little bit longer. Mm-hmm, but if there were different Pegasi along the route helping the Breezies, then shouldn't that have been a coordinated effort? Shouldn't Rainbow Dash have been picking up an existing Breeze from another Pegasi instead of creating her own Breeze? And speaking of Pegasi creating breezies, that one part where Rainbow Dash is like, oh, we're making too much breeze. I'm like, why don't you just use less Pegasus? You know, like Fluttershy. She would have created a perfectly good breeze. <laughs> if you're creating a breeze, the only reason I see to have three Pegasi is if you're trying to make the flow of the breeze wider. You know, so that you have a foot wide breeze instead of a two inch wide breeze. And what do the Breezies do if there aren't helpful Pegasi along the way? You just glide in the wind? And hope there's a strong enough breeze to naturally carry you along? Yeah, there's lots of problems with this. And speaking of plot problems, where the heck did that transformation spell come from? Uh, something that Twilight found in the Castle of the Two Sisters. Yeah, I'm referring to the fact that why didn't you, I mean... I just read this re uh huh. I set you point back to the two sisters' castle and everything, but transformation spell coming out of nowhere? Did we really need this? We did so that we could include the main six in the breezy toy line. And I noticed that most of the, actually all of the main six have longer manes than most of the breezies when they're as breezies. And to continue my breezy journey nitpicking, there were flowers in the Breezy homeland. Why did they even need to come to Equestria to gather pollen? Maybe they need the specific pollen from Equestria to help their flowers grow. But then that would imply that this is possibly a more frequent journey. And if it's a more frequent journey, then more people should be familiar with the Breezies. Because no one else in Ponyville had ever seen the Breezies, so this is the first time the Breezies have passed through Ponyville in the living history of anyone who's lived in Ponyville. Which would be, oh, let's see, everyone in Ponyville. Because Ponyville was founded when Granny Smith was just a filly. So that means that it's never occurred in all that time. They either haven't come to Equestrian all that time, or the route has never gone through Ponyville before. Either way, raises more questions. And speaking of questions, someone do a calculation on how fast that portal was closing to see if they actually had enough time to chit-chat? Because it looked to be closing much faster than me than they actually had time. And if you want to chit-chat, um, cross through the portal first and then just stand there and talk to each other through the portal. That way no one gets stuck. And this is also where we see why he wanted to get back so badly. He has a kid. And what we don't know is if the fact that the kid was born before or after he left. He may have been leaving a pregnant wife and now he's coming back to see his kid. True, because we have no idea how long the journey took, how long the Breezies were away from their homeland. Because considering how small the Breezies are, I'm thinking that after the Breezies entered Equestria, that portal needed to close. Because otherwise, there had to be some sort of predator that could have gone through the portal and destroyed the Breezy homeland. Which may be another reason why they had to pass through Ponyville. If the first portal closes, the entrance portal and the exit portal may be two different locations. Hmm. Logic. Oh, and a correction. 
Fluttershy actually cried four times total. <laughs> Two in this episode. At least one of them was out of joy. Mm. Yeah, she cries and she says, Isn't it beautiful that she got that he got back to his family? Yeah, and initially I wasn't expecting this to be a key item episode. I mean, once we got a little further in and Fluttershy was being reluctant to let them go, I thought, oh, okay, this could be. Like, but what is she possibly going to get from the Breezies? Are they going to give her back one of the sweaters she made? <laughs> How is she going to keep that as her key item? So it was nice that she got a flower. It was nice that the flower transformed in size back with her so that she has a normal sized flower instead of a teeny tiny flower. And being from the Breezy's magical homeland, I'm sure that it's not going to wilt, so we will have a usable flower for her key when the time comes. Yeah, I kind of had a feeling that it would be a key episode from near the start. Just something about it. I think specifically the name. I don't know why the name made me think, yeah, this is going to be a key episode. Yeah, the only things the episode name brought to mind was A, marketing, easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. <laughs> Which is funny because I don't wear makeup. And then the Muppets was actually what came to mind first. You know, Kermit's It's Not Easy Being Green song. I'm pretty sure there's one other thing because my brain says that title's very familiar to me. I'm just going to have to look it up later. That or someone in the comments will tell me. Like they did last time. This guy actually commented on the video and said some other references, the Twilight Time name reference. Oh. And when I thought of right after the recording, which was Howdy Doody Time. Ah. And he also referenced two other songs that had a similar title. And one actually had the same title. Interesting. No, and then it's a little surprising with this being an item where a main six cast member gets her key item, that this wasn't an episode marked in the hint list that was provided to the fans. So I'm wondering now if the acquisition of the keys actually wasn't the important thing in the previous key episodes. If there was something else important about those episodes. That or after a certain point the numbers refer to something else. Because the other numbers on the list referred to previous episodes, a lot of them being key episodes. As in episodes that we think are episodes that have to do with the keys to the box. These might be key episodes in some other way too, like you said. But now I'm wondering, it's like, okay, is the obtaining of the key actually what's important in the prior key episodes? Or was it something else? Like in Rarity Takes Manhattan. Was it her getting the thread that was important? Or was it the fact that she changed the point of view of the pony who gave her the thread, thereby improving her life by reintroducing her to the generosity of spirit and letting her go her own way? Yeah, that seems to happen in every episode where there's a key involved, including this one. She changed the point of view of the Breezy making him a better leader. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think that there may be a lot of misdirection for the overarching plot, which is funny to say for a show that's targeted to the young female demographic. Though the person who released that tweet that had the numbers in it is also known to being a bit of a practical joker with the fans. So we could be doing all the speculation and it could be for nothing, which is the case with almost all speculation. We're just guessing. Mm -hmm. Usually slightly educated guesses from all the information we can gather from different sources. Mm -hmm. but I thought this was a rather sophisticated lesson for this episode, you know, because looking at it basically, in the most simple terms, it's that too much kindness may hold your friends back, but if you look at it more deeply, Fluttershy's kindness was enabling the Breezies to keep from engaging in what they needed to do. Usually don't get into enabler behavior discussions, at least in my education, until like late junior high. I don't ever remember getting that kind of discussion anywhere really, <laughs> except on TV shows that have this as a lesson. Oh, me and you have had different schooling, so. Quite. And then I was playing with the phrasing on this a little bit, but they basically also get to say that too much kindness can be like too much sugar. It feels really good, 
but it turns out to be really bad for you. That's a good phrasing. I like that phrasing. We should make that into a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It was inspired by something that I read in a book of a certain author who I now nitpick and drives me crazy, but it was in one of her earlier books. Ah, uh, so what were your final thoughts in this episode? I should say, what are your final thoughts? Oopsie! <laughs> I did enjoy the episode. I'm glad that they didn't try to fit a song into it. This has been a very song-filled season, and I don't think that a song would have enhanced it. I like the overall lesson that's learned and the overall storyline, but nitpicking, there's a lot of plot holes, and I didn't really like the way the Breezies talked. Because to continue to nitpick, Seabreeze says that he's the only one who can speak the equestrian language, and that the other Breezies can't understand it. So why are we cheering the Breezies that they can't understand the cheer? And other than not having to put on s subtitles or having Fluttershy translate, why do we hear Seabreeze's apology in the equestrian language instead of in the Breezy language? It was a good lesson. It was a fun episode. The transformation at the end was fun. It was even more fun as Rainbow Dash asking to be turned into a griffin. So if I just watch it without thinking about it too hard, really enjoy it. If I start nitpicking, take some of the fun out of it. Yeah, when I first started watching it, this is definitely going to be a key episode. I also had a feeling that the lesson would either be hard love or learning to let go. And the second time too, it actually was similar to that. It was kind of a combination of the two. And I didn't really see that till the second time I watched through. Overall, I liked that episode. I found it fun. I liked the design of the Breezies. I also liked, like you said, that we now have a new toy line and the fact that the main six look pretty good as Breezies. Though I was also kind of thinking is, technically, since they have wings, is Rarity now an Alicorn there? <laughs> <laughs> no, because she's a Breezy, which is a different species. So maybe she's a Breezy Alicorn. Thank you for watching the video, and I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on the episode, and enjoyed the drawing. If you liked our work, please subscribe or make a comment. And speaking of comments, thank you to Sasami-chan, hopefully I'm not butchering that too much, for the information about what Twilight Time may reference. It was very informative, and if you would like more updates in the videos, please follow me on Tumblr. Or, if you would like to see full resolutions of the images I draw during each video, go over to my DeviantArt channel. Links in the description. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony. Friendship is Magic, Season 4, Episode 16, It Ain't Easy, Be Ambrazies.